Hey everyone, and welcome to another tutorial brought to you by the Minecrafters. I'm Captain Jack, and in this block spotlight series, we'll be unraveling GregTech one machine at a time and showing you some in game applications along the way. GregTech adds a ton of awesome machines and a complexity to the game that may make you want to pull your hair out. Gregor's T designed this add on to balance the modded Minecraft experience and make the game more challenging and long. Once added into your game, GregTech's configuration files will override many of Industrial Craft 2's current recipes, as well as recipes from other mods, making some previously easy to craft machines much more difficult to make. If you love the additions Greg Tech brings to the table but don't like the recipe changes, feel free to change your own configuration files as you, as you see fit to adjust your personal gameplay difficulty or take Greg Tech out entirely. Crying about how hard it is won't do anybody any good. So sit back, relax, and get ready for an information inoculation in this episode of our Greg Tech Block Spotlight series. Enjoy. <laughs> Next up we have the Industrial Electrolyzer. This upgraded form of the Electrolyzer by Greg Tech will take various liquids and solids and break them down into their individual component makeups based on the periodic table of the elements for the most part. Let's take a look at this machine. All right, to make this Industrial Electrolyzer, you're going to need two advanced circuits, four refined iron or aluminum. You're gonna need an extractor, a regular electrolyzer, and a magnetizer. And we haven't seen this magnetizer block yet, but it's fairly simple, just a machine block, some redstone, and some iron fence. Not that bad to make. Once you have this machine and you open it up, you're going to see this GUI. You're going to have an input slot for empty cells on the left, an input slot for the various liquids or solids that you want to electrolyze here, and the various output sides or output slots that you're going to get when you break down the components. And here you have an H2O slot, and that's for water. You can click the middle here to cycle through all of this machine's recipes. And they're all different. And we'll go over some of the most important ones in a second. This machine can be picked up with the basic IC2 wrench, a prototype Omni wrench, or an electric wrench. If you use the prototype Omni wrench, you're going to have to click on the top or shift click on the top or bottom facings of this machine. If you use a regular wrench, you can just click it on any side. But there's a 10% chance that it's going to turn into machine parts. Okay, so you're just going to watch, want to watch out for that. Uh, so that's how you make the machine. Very simply inside, you can pump water directly into this machine or you can use water cells. And this is the water, the H2O slot that you just saw. And right here I have an ender tank full of water. And if I click the output, it's just going to load this up. So this can go on any side of the machine. Um, you can pump directly in from an ender tank or you can use uh, pipes, various pipes, build craft pipes. This is a liquid duct here. Okay. This machine right here needs 128 EU per tick to operate effectively. Um, if it doesn't get its full energy source throughout the entire process of making the product, I believe it's supposed to cancel the entire thing and you lose your resources. And I'm not actually sure if that's 100% true or if that's maybe fixed in a later version. So here we have the water. If I set this to output, it's going to load up over here. And we're going to see it go. But this is not going to be making en any energy. And you can see the difference between this machine here, where it says inventory, and this says insufficient energy line. That means the machine is not getting enough power to operate effectively. And I've set it that way with the quantum generator in back, just to display that. So if you see this, it means your machine is not getting enough power, and it will just kind of bump up and down and try to make your stuff, but it's never going to get anywhere. Now the input and output slots of this machine are fairly simple. The outputs are all around the outside edges, as you see here. The input for dust and other materials is on the top, and the output for, or and the input for empty cells is on the bottom here. Well, that is not right. Let's change that. In empty cells. Okay, it's a little bit off, but anyways. You're gonna put your empty cells through the bottom, and they're gonna go into this slot. You're gonna put the dust and anything else that you wanna mass rate or electrolyze in this machine through the top and it's going to end up in this slot right here and you can pull out from any side. Here we have a little bit of an AE or applied energistics automation for this machine. As you can see I've written here that it takes 128 EU per tick default and uh, here I had it putting there there's bauxite dust going through here which is one of the most probably important things that you can electrolyze in this machine and it's being broken down into its individual components. I have this set to export the various dusts into the top, which are going to end up here. 
And if I remove that, you're going to see that it's going to start filling up. I have the bottom importing or exporting empty cells into this machine, and that will fill up as well separately and individually. Now, this machine is not receiving any power, to, or it's not uh, going to make any more things because it's already jammed up here. If I remove this, it's going to start the process, and it's going to start breaking down this box site into its various components. So this is a really simple way to automate the machine. Now, if I were to actually flip this, it's going to start emptying everything out, and it's going to empty out all four of these slots. So you just need one um, output side, and I have it over here, and it's going to go from one side from left to right, and it's going to drain this machine of all the things that it's electrolyzed to let you have room to make more stuff. Okay, so a really simple way to automate this machine. So input for the dust and stuff and anything you want to electrolyze in the top, input for cells in the bottom, output on any of the surrounding sides. Now this machine, like many other Greg Tech machines, or like all other Greg Tech machines, can take upgrades. And uh, I forgot to change the red from the last episode, but that's okay. Um, it can take an overclocker, transformer, HV transformer, energy storage upgrade, lithium battery upgrade, pneumatic generator upgrade, or RS energy cell upgrade. And if you mouse over this machine, you're going to see in the bottom of my screen, it says possible upgrades OTBM. And it will also give you the max EU per tick input, which is 128. Now, the available upgrades for this machine are overclocker, transformer upgrade, um, B stands for battery, or EU storage upgrade, and M stands for MJ upgrade. And you can see that real quick right here. If you do want to apply upgrades to this machine, simply right-click your upgrade, the desired one you want to put on the machine, right in there. It's only going to take one transformer upgrade but because it's already at 128 EU per tick. And if I check that with my portable scanner, we're already up to 512. Now it can be further upgraded with the HV transformer upgrade, which is going to bring it up to 8192. So I can put two of those in here, check it with my portable scanner. 8,192 maximum safe input. I can also apply lithium battery upgrades or regular battery upgrades to increase the internal storage power of this machine. You can see we're at 30,000 now. If I apply a lithium battery upgrade, we're going to be at 130,000. And we'll also list the upgrades that are inside the machine. Keep in mind that upgrading your machine um, will consume the upgrade and you will never be able to get it back. So be careful when you're doing that. And especially be careful when you're applying overclocker upgrades to the machine because it will severely damage or s severely increase um, the power that it will take to operate the machine. In most cases, it's not worth it to put more than two overclockers inside a machine. Let's take a look at actually how this machine really works so you can understand it a little bit better. If we mouse over this, and I'm going to press U for use, this is ender pearl dust, and it's going to show us that this ender pearl is going to turn into nitrogen, beryllium, potassium, and chlorate. And if you'll notice, if uh, you see the tooltip for the ender pearl dust, right below where it says ender pearl, it says BEK4N5CL6. And those are actually going to tell you what this component is going to break down into. Now, not everything that you throw into the electrolyzer is going to give you a, an exact breakdown, um, but this is what I meant by the periodic table. The elements, you can kind of see that BE stands for this right here, beryllium. K stands for potassium, and there's a 4 next to that, and we're going to get 4 potassium. The N stands for nitrogen, and we're going to get 5, so there's an N5. And then CL stands for chlorite, and we're going to get 6 of those. So that'll help you understand the tooltip there of what it's going to break down to inside the industrial electrolyzer, electrolyzer. And it'll also tell you how much energy it's going to take and how much time it's going to take to break these components down. Over here, I just have some recipes thrown into here. Bauxite, which is one of the most important things that you're going to throw into this machine because it gets you titanium dust. And if you put four piles of titanium dust in a shapeless crafting grid, you're going to get um, a, or a tiny pile of that titanium dust. You're going to get a titanium dust. And you can smelt that through a blast furnace get, to get titanium ingots and then further to get plates. But we'll go over that when we check out the blast furnace, which is coming up soon. Another thing you're going to get is aluminum, and this is how you can get all those aluminum plates that we showed you before. It's the interchangeable um, item with the refined iron, so you can use this in the place of refined iron a lot. You're going to get a ton of it per every one of these. So this is going to become very abundant later on, so you might want to change all of your recipes over if you have an AE system to use aluminum instead of refined iron, and use that iron for other things. 
Ruby Dust he could be the most important one to use with this. I guess it's all a matter of opinion, but this is going to get you Chrome, and this is, I believe, besides B, is the only way to get this. Um, Chrome is going to be an extremely valuable, uh, maybe the second most valuable resource in your Greg Tech experience, uh, aside from Iridium. So this is this Ruby Dust, which you get by mass rating rubies, through the industrial electrolyzer is going to get you this Chrome. So bear that in mind. This is going to be an extremely important resource. And again, we have more aluminum, and we have these compressed air cells. Now, compressed air cells don't really do anything for you, so you can just take these out. You can put them into a shapeless crafting grid and empty them back out and recycle them through the system. And you can also run them through um, an extractor, I believe, to extract the air back out of them so you can put them back into your electrolyzer and use them for other things. Here we have lazarite dust. Um, this is found in the end, I believe, and you're going to get various different things from them. More aluminum again, so you're going to have a lot of that aluminum. Emerald dust, if you can afford to throw this through an electrolyzer, then more power to you, but you're going to get more of this beryllium, silicon, and compressed air. And this is actually going to be a really important component in iridium-plated neutron thick iridium-plated neutron reflectors, um, which is a crazy component that you need to make the fusion coils for the fusion reactor. Simple coal will turn into carbon. Calcite will turn into compressed air, carbon, and calcium. Pyrite dust will turn into sulfur and iron. And clay dust is going to turn into silicon and all this stuff. So this is, these are just a few recipes that you can use. You're going to end up having a lot of these cells, especially if you automate your system. If you use something like this where it's automatically throwing these dust through your electrolyzer for you as they come in from your quarry, you're going to have a lot of different liquid um, items that you may not know what to do with. And luckily, a lot of these items just can be thrown into tanks. So if you have a uh, quantum tank, if you're on total beast mode, or if you just have regular Zycraft, Railcraft, Buildcraft, or thermal expansion, uh, portable tanks, you can throw them all inside these things for a lot more compact and easy storage. Now, keep in mind when you throw them in here, you're going to lose the cell, so you might want to use a liquid transposer to get those inside of there. These machines will also take Buildcraft Power or MJ, and all you need to do is throw an MJ upgrade inside them, and you can see on the bottom left that it says 0 of 10,000 MJ, and that's because I put the MJ upgrade, the pneumatic generator upgrade, inside this machine. And these can be further upgraded with the RS Energy Cell upgrade to hold more MJ or more Buildcraft Power. So now we have a total available power storage or internal power storage of 4, 410,000. Okay, and it's most... Um, and it's going to be most likely powered by EU, but there you go. So that's the industri industrial electrolyzer, and this is going to be a really important machine moving on, especially to put this bauxite dust through, and this ruby dust, and the ender pearl dust, wherever it is. Anyways, I probably passed it, the ender pearl dust, but you get the point. You see how the, material, the materials are broken down into their various components, and you're going to definitely need a lot of the stuff that this machine can make later on. Thank you for watching. Stay poised for episode 5 where we are going to cover the industrial centrifuge, I believe. And then we'll move on to the industrial blast furnace. Make sure to check us out on Twitch TV. TheMinecrafters.com is our blog. TheMinecrafters.com on Facebook. And as always guys, stay poised.